and uh, under the supervision of Professor Hikakamura. So, and uh, his achievement was quite nice, and uh, that actually, so that his achievements led him to be a winner of the um, Young Scientist Award of the JPS and Physical Society of Japan. And after that, so that he moved to the Tokyo University, and uh, he worked on the ISSB as a uh, researcher, and he changed the slightly um, um, department and within the Tokyo University, and he was promoted to the lecturer, and now he is associate, associate professor in the Tokyo University in the Professor Sinsdorf's groups. So um, he has worked on the uh, Tencent Network study recent for two, 10 years, I think, so that you can learn about the basics about the Tencent Network, especially for the two-dimensional processing system in this tutorial talk. Okay, so it's time to start, please start your talk. Very much for introduction. Thank you. Okay, let me start. So, uh, first of all, uh, I'd like to talk a little bit of this tutorial opportunity. So, okay, today uh, I'd like to do this for a few of my problems. I don't know if you Okay. Let's start my tutorial lecture about the uh, Tensor Network approach. So yesterday, uh, the, uh, there was a lecture about the DMRD that corresponds to the one-dimensional approach, a uh, one-dimensional, uh, sorry, Tensor Network approach to the one-dimensional system. And today, I, I'd like to introduce the uh, extension of such DMRD technique, especially to the two-dimensional system. Okay. So, in my opinion, the tensor network approach itself can be applicable to any kind of the tensors uh, instead of uh, many quantum network systems. But uh, uh, so today, I focus on the application to the quantum network systems. Okay, so this is the content of my whole uh, lecture. And uh, in this part one session, I treat the this introduction and the uh, area of the entanglement. Okay. So at this part one, I only treat the outline of the tensor network method. So we don't uh, explicitly treat the two-dimensional approach. But so this part um, somehow overlap, overlap with the previous DMRD part. But uh, I'd like to explain you the idea of the tensor network in my language. Okay. So after the introduction, I, I, I'd like to motivate you uh, why we need the tensor network approach to study the quantum physics problem. <laughs> and also, I introduce you the outline of the tensor network quantum state. That is the one application of the tensor network approach. We can consider that uh, that is the, some kind of the uh, data compression technique of the uh, huge tensor. And then we uh, move on to the uh, area of the entanglement entropy, which uh, Characterize the property of the tensor network state. So I want to discuss the, what is the quantum entanglement and why it is important to understand the power of the tensor network. And based on this quantum entanglement, I showed you that uh, in the case of the two-dimensional system, system is especially the NPS break. Okay, so that is the first part. Then let's go to the introduction. So, yeah, we want to investigate uh, many uh, quantum medium programs. So, because the variety of the phenomena in quantum quantum physics is governed by quantum medium programs. So, like a chemical reaction, superconductivity, or 
historical stage, something like that. There are many exotic uh, phenomena. And uh, some, uh, most of, sorry, not most, some of these interesting phenomena is governed by the Schrodinger equation. And that can be considered as kind of the algebraic problem if we don't consider the uh, time dependent. And uh, at the, uh, some lecture I talk about you, the problem in the quantum variable system is that the dimension of the vector space, linear space, increases exponentially if we increase the number of the particles or number of the spin. Or the, uh, and so the quantum variable problem can be considered as the eigenvalue problem of the huge. So the, uh, nowadays, we, uh, or near future, we may use a quantum computer instead of the classical computer. But uh, if we use only the classical computer to solve the, such this kind of a huge matrix, uh, matrix uh, eigenvalue problem, we need huge classical memory and a huge computational time. That's the problem. So here we fo focus on the frustration system. And so uh, let me uh, explain the, what is the uh, spin model. Probably most of you know what it is, but uh, I'd like to explain. So the quantum spin model, or spin model, is uh, something like that. So spin degree of freedom defined on the lattice and interactive So the typical example is this classical hybrid model, or easy model, uh, on the sum lattice. So in this case, S is just a scalar, and take the plus minus one two values. And as you know, if we draw the phase diagram or the temperature dependence of the order parameter, we see the phase transition like this. So the for high temperature phase, the speed of typical speed population is disordered. And but below the critical temperature, the we have the thermonetary order phase. In, in this case, the phase transition occurs by varying the temperature. And similar situation may occur in the case of the quantum spin system. So here we consider the quantum spin. So that in this case, S is the operator, spin operator. And that here we have the interaction between the B component of the S, the spin S. And then we apply the transfer to it, uh, orthogonal to it, perpendicular to the T direction, in this case, A direction. And in this case, similar to the classical Eisen model, if we tune the parameter gamma, if the amplitude of the transfer speed, then we observe the similar phase transition. In the high gamma phase, the state is uh, totally pointing to the x direction in this case. And if the gamma is sufficiently small, it is just like the ID model, so we have the thermodynamic order phase. So in this case, we keep the temperature as t equals zero. And so it, this is the uh, zero temperature phase transition for a uh, quantum phase transition. Okay, so this is the typical situation. But if we have the some competition among the uh, interactions in the, our spin system, uh, that is called the frustration. Okay, that can be the geometric origin or the concept due to the further by interaction or something like that. Then uh, we may have uh, some frustration <laughs> among the uh, interaction. The typical situation occurs in the case of the antiferromagnet in the sun lattice. So, in the case of the antiferromagnet, we want to uh, underparallelize the two spins if we only cause the one interaction. However, so if we uh, consider the triangle, uh, triangle, and we consider the three spins, as we know, if we consider the eigen spin of this triangle, so there is a frustration that means that on, if we put the up spin and the down spin to satisfy the, this local energy minimization on this one, then we cannot decide, determine the direction of the uh, spin on this uh, on this node on pipes. Because if we uh, put the up spin here, then the, this one becomes uh, unsatisfied. And if we put the downspin here, then the, this horizontal mode becomes unsatisfied. Okay, so in this case, the, we obtain the sum 
increase of the degeneracy of the current state. And this kind of the phenomena introduces the uh, variety uh, of uh, interesting topics in the quantum spin system. And uh, this kind of the geometric fluctuation occurs in the case of, for example, cogomerates or pyro like And we observe a lot of interesting things like uh, no magnetic long range order due to the huge energy like this. Or uh, no very old that he just from the weak perturbation, or a liquid state, or a project or something like that. Okay. So, yeah, I believe we want to understand this kind of the, uh, phenomena induced by the translation. However, if we want to approach uh, this kind of uh, quantum translated system, there are uh, these calculus. So, the here we want to apply, uh, investigate the program by numerics. And the, as uh, many uh, returns showed you that the, because the dimension of the Hilbert space increase exponentially, the computation technique to attack the, this quantum metabolic program are uh, limited. So the, as Shimoka san explained, the, we can anyway apply the numerical diagonalization technique to solve the eigenvalue problem. But as he said, the, for example, in the case of the ethic warehouse spin system, that we can treat at most uh, about 50 size, 50 spins in the case of the ethic warehouse spin. And but we are interested in the for example phase transition. So in, in order to understand the phase transition, we may need to consider much larger system than this 50 size. So we need a careful extrapolation to understand the physics. So uh, in my opinion, the uh, simulation based on the numerical diagonalization becomes uh, often severe because we need a careful extrapolation to the thermodynamic phase. The other example is the quantum Monte Carlo. So probably many of you know what is the Monte Carlo technique. So uh, by using this technique, we can uh, simulate the very large system, but as the lecture in the yesterday, maybe the, the, there is a sign problem due to the thermodynamic sign, thermodynamic uh, statistics or the uh, interaction, frustrated interaction. So, in this case, if we are interested in the frustrated system, we cannot apply, basically, we cannot apply the this technique. So we need uh, another technique. And the other third possibility is the so-called the variational method. Uh, in this case, uh, we are seeing uh, some wave function on that. And we try to minimize the energy expectation value based on the kind of assumed wave function on that. A variational multiple technique is one of the famous way in this variational method. And the today's topic, tensor network method, or DMRD, is also in the, this variational. So uh, today, we want to discuss the uh, why tensor network method, tensor network on that is so good. So or, uh, I directly discuss about the when the tensor network uh, on that becomes uh, useful. Then uh, this is the uh, outline of the data comp compression based on the data network. So the, as I uh, mentioned, uh, in my opinion, the we can consider that the tensor network approach for the quantum medical system is some kind of the data compression technique. So based on this opinion, we can say something. So as I explained, the quantum state vector is in the exponentially large dimensional Hilbert space. And so because of this, it is impossible to do it it's in the classical computer. But if we can perform the efficient data compression to represent the, some quantum states, then we can treat that kind of vector in our classical computer. Fortunately, as I will explain later, 
the so if we consider the low energy state, including the ground state, the, it is known that the small the quantum correlation uh, exists. The, the general ground state, it is called the area of the entanglement entropy. Uh, it's very in the website yesterday. And uh, in this case, we can represent the quantum state efficiently within a proper subspace. So this is a thematic view of the, our vector space. So the, this is the huge our vector space, huge space. But by considering the some special under, we construct the some, uh, some <coughs> subspace within the, this vector space. And uh, within this subspace, the, probably the uh, area law, only the area laws are satisfied. Uh, based on the quantum information theory, we can say that the by construct, we can construct the such kind of a vector space, uh, sorry, not vector space, such kind of a subspace using the tensor network representation. So the, this is the, the concept. So we try to make a, a set of the unlocks, for example, by using the this part, area of the entanglement network. And that is the tensor network representation. Okay, so this is just a motivation. And let's move on to the, what is the uh, tensor network total space, tensor network angles for the quantum measurement system. So, because we consider that the tensor network approach, uh, sorry, uh, state is kind of the data component for the uh, quantum state, here we consider that when we can efficiently compress a vector. So, suppose we have a vector and the EI is a basic vector, and here she is a coefficient for each corresponding to the each basis vector. Then the, if we can find the basis, basis vector set where the coefficients have a structure kind of a correlation among them, then it means that uh, all of CI are not necessarily necessarily independent. So in this case, we can store the structure that are in the disk correlation and the independent data. So we can reduce the data to represent this uh, vector. The typical example is the product set in the case of the quantum mid body system. So in this case, the vector quantum state is decomposed into the product of the small vectors like this. So this can be the spin up, spin down, or something like that. And in this case, in this example, the structure corresponds to the information that the state is in the product state. Then the independent element is these small vectors. So in this case, we don't need to store the, for example, exponentially large independent numbers, but what we need is just a set of these small vectors. Because these vectors are so small, we can represent the product state by using the smaller vector. <laughs> Then the, we can also consider the uh, similar situation for corresponding to the quantum multibody systems. And here we consider the tensor network decomposition of the vector. So to apply the tensor network decomposition, we uh, have some, we need to consider some assumptions. The first one is the uh, assumption for that the tensor network representation becomes efficient. So that we Think that the vector space dimension is exponentially large. The other, other important uh, point, uh, component is that uh, our vector space is represented by the product of local Hilbert space, like the quantum variable space. So, in the case of the quantum spin, the local Hilbert space is something like the uh, two dimensional vector space in the case of the SE for one half spin. So here, spin up and spin up. And the total uh, uh, vector space is represented by the uh, tensor product of the big, small vector space. And in this case, we can write the tensor network composition uh, uh, for the quantum minimum system, and but also the variety of the system. For example, we can apply the tensor network composition for the picture images because suppose we have the 256 and 260. 
fixed pixel images like this, then we can factorize these numbers as like the d to the h times d to the s, and it in the, the 16 legs as a corresponding to the h of So we have uh, 16 legs, a global vector space dimension is 2. So this picture image data set data satisfies the this condition, so we can apply the tensor into the conclusion. Similarly, we can consider the probability distribution of, for example, Ising model. So in this case, we have actually the two to the n dimensional, how say, realization in the spin, uh, uh, spin configuration. And so the such spin configuration is two to the n dimensional vector. So we consider it as an angle tensor with a equal to a mean. So we can apply the tensor network technique to represent or to uh, uh, reduce the data of the probability distribution. Okay, how can we decompose the Hilbert space? Right. How, can you, uh, how can we decompose the Hilbert space? So I'm asking. Uh, so I'm asking, how can we decompose the Hilbert space? Can you please explain that? Uh, so you, you are asking. Yeah, you know, about this point. Yes. So this is just a function. So in the case of the quantum spin or quantum many problem, it is trivial. So we just consider the total quantum many body wave function is represented by the how say uh, uh, the basis constructed by the local spin computation construct. So we consider spin up, 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 up and we can be done one of the basis vector and up down up down or can be the another basis vector. So we so the this is the how say construction of the kind of the basis basis vector. So probably the this example is good the final example. Let me explain. Okay, please uh, go ahead and then probably. But is that valid for all the cases? Like in case of rising model, uh, we know that uh, like transfer matrix we can use uh, so we can decompose uh, the systems. But for uh, all the cases, can we do that? Yeah, so we can consider that this is the transformation from the vector to the tensor. Okay. So, so, so usually we have one index. So uh, when you are decomposing, you are not losing any information. Then. Uh, sorry. Uh, when you are decomposing, you are not truncating or you are not losing any information. No. No. There is no approximation. Yeah, so the just, are broken. Yeah. Okay. This is just a function. We can represent our vector space <laughs> as the product of small vector space. Okay. It's just the tensor product. Yeah, yeah. Just the tensor product. And so we transform a vector in this vector space into the some kind of tensor in this space. So we know that this transformation. So if, if I'm not wrong, it is just like saving an array uh, of 256 in 1D rather you take an eight dimensional vector and you save two. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, right, right. Eight dimensional vector. Locally. Mathematically, you are not doing anything, right? I mean, the C2DM is just isomorphic to the yeah, right, right hand right, right. side. So, this, yeah, this is just a representation. But the point is that if you apply the tensor network decomposition, first we define that this kind of decomposition. So, this may be the kind of definition to represent our vector in the tensor space. No, said, uh, actually, how can you map that uh, in like uh, tensor to the configuration space of the lattice? Uh, can you map that tensor with the configuration? Uh, so, do you mean that uh, this, for example, 16 length tensor can be mapped onto the space? For example, that T, M1, M2, MN, uh, how can you, I mean, uh, this, uh, to the bar n configuration is there in the lattice space. Mm -hmm. So suppose I am taking one configuration, and how can I map with that? 
that T M1 M2 uh, M n tension. So your question is probably related to uh, this one. Yeah, uh, that is lattice space. Lattice space. Wave function. Wave function is there, and uh, I think model cases psi T M1 M2 M n and uh, they. Okay, that may be amplitude or what is configuration? I, I cannot understand. Just locally, it's just one is a global where you have represented each of them in one array. Okay. And here, what you have done is you have separated it, I mean, n number of arrays. So, separately for each local one, what you find one array. One array. Right. So, yeah. so <laughs> just, just we transform the something. Uh, this is uh, t to the 16 remainder of vector into the space of 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times uh, table. So 16 remainder of table. Okay. Oh. Okay. So yeah, this is just an example. So the, here, the purpose of this slide is that uh, I, I'd like to emphasize with you that there is some similarity in the several data sets. So, but today we focus on the, this example, so the case of the wave function. So in this case, the maybe the most, for most of you, like, this is the best example. So we represent our quantum state by using the basis. Actually, in the case of the quantum spins with S equal one half, this M1, M2 corresponds to the Z1 for a spin up spin down. And in this case, we, by using this basis, the, our uh, quantum state can be represented as like this tensor. This M1, M2, Mn correspond to the label of index in the basis in the local small uh, vector space. So spin up and spin down for Z1 in the case of the cube. Anyway, the point is that the quantum state can be represented by the <coughs> classical data in some sense with n as the n like this. Okay. So the purpose is to represent that this uh n like tensor is smaller than this. That is the tensor network level function. Uh, one of such kind of the technique is that tensor network level function. Mm -hmm. Okay, then the tensor network decomposition is something like that. So we have the n leg tensor, and we represent the, this n leg tensor as a product in, in some sense, a product of small tensor like this. Here, T1, T2, Tn is the tensor. So it can have the several legs like this, and the, this, this I1, I2, blah, 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 corresponds to the D indices. And uh, there are maybe the complex, complicated exponential between the these tensors. And the in, uh, yeah, okay. And by using the diagram introduced yesterday, we can represent uh, this equation by using, uh, the diagram like this. So we have, for example, five leg tensor, and we represent uh, this five leg tensor by this kind of tensor. So this is the one example of the tensor network decomposition. And uh, here I'd like to remind you the definition of the tensor network diagram. So we represent the tensor as the object plus leg like this. So the for example matrix corresponds to the two leg tensor. So we so we have two legs like this. In some case, we explicitly write down the indices. On leg, but in some case we don't use the index. It just means the vector itself or tensor itself. Not the element. If we write around the index, that that corresponds to the element scalar. Something. So, is it possible to put in the bracket notation? Bracket notation. Mm. Somehow this whole community, like they're unable to connect with this. So that will be much more like efficient. I mean, it will be much more intuitive. Bracket. Yes. Mm -hmm. So when I you represent I 
I would say that it's a local variable at one particular place, right? I mean, yes. that's a just, yes. just, just one configuration, local configuration yes. at that particular place. So, tensor is completely sort of so oh, different yeah. look, different state. Different. Have you many? There's Rocketing, rocket for graphic dog, electric dog is just a basis, and we treat directly the number. It corresponds to the question. Uh, so the reason using this basis. So it is not, <laughs> not easy to transform these numbers into bracket representation, but in the case of the automated body system, we may find that some uh, corresponding representation. So basically, that this is one vector in the one uh, quantum state, for example, and so this is the local quantum state spin up and down. So we can represent this vector. So, so this one, this is the element. Element itself is very difficult, but this vector itself can be represented as a one quantum state. So basically, if if I mark raw, then is it something like at side i, it's either spin up or down? Can I think of that? Ah, yes. Index i corresponds to the up and down. Index i represents up and down. Yes. So i can represent the up and down in the case of the SQL okay. okay. And uh, this is the beta in that subspace. Uh, beta space. So the spin can be the superposition of up and down. The space can be the superposition of up and down. And uh, this data characterizes. Uh, in some sense, the direction of the state. So this is the state itself. And the index corresponds to the basis. Okay. So the important group in this diagram is uh, connecting the legs. So the, okay. So the, this is just a matrix matrix multiplication by connecting the legs of two matrices we perform the matrix matrix multiplication. So we take, so by connecting the two legs, it means that we take the sum by sharing the same index like this. So it is called a contraction in the language in tensor. And so we generate this diagram to the, this complicated contraction. And so this contraction is used by this diagram. Okay. So for this can half I and k can take two values? Yes. In the case two values. Uh, sorry, it depends on the meaning of these uh, addresses. But if we consider, uh, yeah, I will explain it, but <laughs> it is very difficult to answer. Because, the, for example, in the case of the matrix product state, the some indices can take only the two values. But the battery this is can be added to the image of So okay, let me explain later. Yeah, so it's a yeah, concrete example. This is the general expression. So okay. So the point is that by connecting the legs, we reduce the contraction. This is the rule. Okay. So for at least for me, this expression is a little complicated, but by representing this contraction by this diagram. We can uh, intuitively understand the connectivity of the tensor. So this is the way to use uh, this tensor of diagram. Okay. Then, oh, okay. So this is not so important. So by using this diagram, uh, we can use it, uh, our tensor of decomposition or something like that. So the, uh, another important message is that we can design any kind of the network structure. Or the tensor of decomposition. In the case of the quantum many body system, we may use, we may consider the regular system. And in that case, uh, matrix product state or tensor product state may be useful. But for the general application, like uh, data analysis or the image state or something like that, we can design the, any kind of the tensor network, which is suitable for the data set. Data. Okay. In the case of the quantum many body system, Maybe due to the lattice, the, the, the regular lattice structure is suitable. Okay, then, okay, for a minute. 
So next, I, I directly discussed the following. Well, this time it's uh, the composition technique <coughs> you can use in the case of the quantum physical system. And that is the idea of my experiment entropy. So first, I, I briefly introduce it, uh, what is, remind it what is the quantum entanglement. OK, so let me start with, with the Schmidt, so called the Schmidt decomposition. So suppose we have a quantum state, then we uh, try to decompose, sorry, not decompose, that's right. So we just divide a system into two parts, part A and part B, or part A or part B. It is it not necessarily the correspond to the real state. So we, we can consider any kind of the decomposition division. But let's suppose like this. Then uh, it is known that the general wave function can be represented by a superposition of also known like this. That is the called the Schmidt decomposition. So usually the, by using the usual basis, usual basis means the spin up and down, we can represent the quantum state as like this using by using the <coughs> standard or the language in the quantum uh, computer computational by using the computational basis that uh, we can represent the, our quantum state by using the matrix. So for this A is the also normal basis for the region A and B are the also normal basis for the region B. And by using these two also normal basis, the general quantum state represents by this matrix. However, we can choose the special basis corresponding to the, this uh, specific quantum state. And in that case, we can represent uh, this uh, uh, state by using only the diagonal component like this. So the summation change to the over the ij, uh, from over the ij to the single i. So in the language in the matrix, the dense matrix changes to the diagonal matrix by changing the basis. That, that is the Schmidt decomposition. Okay. And this lambda is called a uh, Schmidt coefficient or Schmidt Schmidt wave. Okay. Then probably you can realize that. This is just a diagonalization. So actually, it, it is explained in that uh, yesterday's lecture. So we can perform this Schmidt decomposition by using, for example, uh, yeah. Shigeru by decomposition. Okay. So what is the physical significance of this lambda? It is measuring the entanglement. Yeah, right, right, right. If the lambda is one, then this is some kind of polar set, and if lambda is does not equal to one, then this is the entire set. Yeah, right. Uh, uh, then, if I take only the left hand side and the only the rates, whatever you have uh, stored in the, uh, can you please go back to your, uh, yes. If I take only the A, I mean the only red side, then each the orthonormal condition will vary or not. I mean, the, if I put, uh, if I take the, all the sides are red, I mean the whatever you are denoting by red and blue. So, red or blue is basically, and the, how uh, how do I differentiate it between this red and the blue Hilbert space? I mean, Sorry. I, I am I saying that what is uh, what is the relation between alpha alpha and beta? Alpha and beta is determined from the uh, information on this quantum state. Yes. So actually, it is explained how to calculate uh, this alpha and beta. Yeah, this yeah. yeah. So this, this is a this slide. Okay. Okay. So, in the question. Okay. Yeah. Can you go back to the last slide? Okay. So you say you divide your uh, uh, inner wave function. Then why have you shown that A is in subspace of B? Is that what you showed from there? Uh, sorry. Uh, A is also subspace. Yeah, A is subspace, but are you trying to show that A is in some subspace of B or no? No. no. So A and B is a defined vector spaces. Yeah. And this is the uh, here we perform the some unitized transformation in each 
and we try to find a good a good basis to represent uh, this quantum state. And by choosing the good basis, we represent uh, this state as a simple combination of uh, this one. So the point is that there is no of diagram. So, yeah, I get. But in your diagram, A is within B. So I thought uh, you're trying to show that ah, okay. some some subspace of B. No, this is a defined state. So right. So ah, there is no overlap. Okay, I I got confused with the diagram. Okay, thank sorry. you. So yeah, okay, this is maybe the important question. Uh, question. So in this uh, schematic view, the A there is no overlap between the region and the region. Thank you. I'm sorry. Okay, then let me explain. Uh, so uh, we can perform the, this kind of symmetric decomposition by using the singular value decomposition of the matrix. The singular value decomposition is like this. So we transform the any matrix into the this form. U and B are unitary, and the lambda is the non-negative uh, values. And so this kind this is kind of the generalization of the uh, I would say diagonalization or spectral decomposition. And uh, another important point is that these singular values are non negative. <laughs> so we can order these singular values and by picking up the uh, larger singular values and by neglecting the smaller singular values, we can reduce the data to represent the, this matrix that is called the low number population based on the singular value decomposition. So, uh, in the sense of the data compression, so the, this singular value decomposition. Is a standard technique to perform the data compression. Then the point is that by substituting this singular value decomposition into this representation, okay, so the by So by using the unitaries, U and B, and we can define the new basis. And by using this basis, we obtain the Schmidt decomposition. So it means that the Schmidt coefficient is nothing but the singular values of the original matrix. And so it means that the singular value decomposition of the quantum state is directly, directly related to the Schmidt decomposition. And the, it means that the number of, I'm uh, sorry, so I assume that uh, also we know the, what is the singular value of this. Okay. So yes, I will go to Edgar in which one. Uh, sorry, sorry, please leave the microphone. Have you wrote the U dagger is equal to one and V dagger B? Is it right? I mean, the, it should be V V dagger is equal to one. I mean, the, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so, so here it should be Yeah, so the, the indices would be yeah. swiped. Uh, no, the basic and I should be there. But the order of the indices are fine. So because the n corresponds to the values. And yeah. the purpose is to, uh, how to say, uh, take the summation over the this index in this representation. No, sir. What I am saying that uh, when you are taking this sum over uh, i u dagger e is equal to, if you take i, uh, if, if your n is equal to m prime, then you will get u dagger u is equal to 1. and. Uh, you, uh, according to you, V dagger V is equal to 1. But I am saying that V, V dagger is equal to 1, not V dagger V. Uh, okay. Because when you are doing SPT. Okay. okay. So. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. 
flow that we are so Okay, so this is my mistake. So it should be the V not the the bar. Uh, yeah, it's not a square matrix. It's not a square matrix. Then you have to clear. Okay. Then for the square matrix. Yeah. For well, square matrix, it is like, but not for if there is no square matrix. Yeah. It's for. So I guess I think it is. Uh, this is correct. And so the 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 this guy is data. So okay, okay. This, this formula. Yes. So it, this formula coming from the this coming from the it's a running variable that's good. Thanks. Anyway, so why is in the same decomposition? This is for your question. So uh, may I mean just okay. So for the uh, uh, square matrix, this U and V should be just like eigenvectors. Ah, uh, yes. So, in the case of the square matrix, uh, and if the eigenvalues are non negative or the sign of the eigenvalue is same for all eigenvalues, in that case, the E and the U are the uh, eigenvalues. But in the case of, uh, sorry. This is transformation. Yeah. So, in the case of the SVD, we may have the minus sign in the these inequalities. It's the sign on the eigenvalues are defined. So, the, in the case of the similar value decomposition, we understand that, that this is not a in density matrix, you always have lambda Okay. In the case of the density matrix normalization, we consider the, the product of M and M gamma. So, maybe the point is important. In the case of the density matrix generalization, it comes out of eigenvalue decomposition of n times n lambda. Then the that first, then the how to say the eigenvalue of such that reduced density matrix corresponds to the square of this chimney square of the numbers, chimney uh one. And then U and V should be the eigenvectors of the yes, yes, in that case. So if we consider n times n lambda, we obtain the eigen. It does be represented by this U. And if we consider M dava M instead of the M dava, in that case, the eigenvalue corresponds to this. Okay. Then, uh, so based on the basics of the singular value decomposition, the number of long zero singular value corresponds to the rank of the matrix. So by counting the number of non-zero singular values, we obtain the rank of the matrix. And that's the point. So the number of non-zero Schmidt coefficients is uh, nothing but the rank of this matrix. That, that point is for, uh, corresponds to the previous question about the important I will explain that next slide. So it means that, uh, uh, so then, here we introduce the integral term so for the Schmidt rank. That is the number of non dead Schmidt coefficient. And as I explained, that is the rank of the matrix M. Then uh, this Schmidt rank somehow characterizes the constant correlation between the region and the region. So the Schmidt rank is equal to 1, means that the constant state is represented by the um, product state like this. So this uh, maybe as we know, in this case there is no this this situation is basically the classical situation. So there is no quantum correlation. There can be the classical correlation, but there is no quantum correlation. And if the Schmidt rank is larger than one, it means that the quantum state is represented by the sum of product state. Okay. So this summation over the several product states give us the somehow the non-local correlation. So I didn't discuss the, what is the non-local correlation in this lecture. I assume that you know what is the total state. So it means that uh, the Schmidt rank can characterize the amount of the non-local correlation. 
So large asymmetric means that uh, there might, might be maybe the larger motor correlation. Okay. But the Schmidt lamp is actually uh, just an <laughs> integer number, integral number. So when I knew that more uh, character the quantum correlation uh, or combinatory, uh, we often use the so-called LMP <coughs> instead of the lamp itself. That is called the entangled entropy. And uh, it is defined out like this. Again, we consider the uh, uh, divide the quantum state into two parts, A and B, and we try to characterize the quantum correlation between A and B. Then the, we uh, first calculate the reduced tracing matrix by truncating and uh, uh, tracing out the degree of freedom in the region B, defined as like this. Then, the, as uh, in the yesterday lecture, we define the entanglement entropy as a polynomial entropy over this mixed uh, state flow and flow. So uh, let me explain it in more detail. So in the case of the pure state, if we construct the density matrix, it is known that the, it is uh, the random uh, state and uh, it is not a mixed state. But even if we start from the pure state by considering the reduced density matrix, like addressing out the, some degree of freedom, the state in this subspace A becomes a mixed state, not a pure state. And we have the finite entropy. And uh, this entropy, entanglement entropy, characterizes this kind of uh, entropy represented by this mixed, uh, mixed state. Then, uh, by Treating the previous Schmidt decomposition into the definition of this entanglement entropy, we obtain the this expression finally. So it means that if our quantum state is normalized as like this, then the entanglement entropy is represented by the, this equation. So the we consider the lambda i square is the weight of the state i. And the, it characterizes the probability distribution of the state I, and this entanglement entropy is nothing but the entropy over the such kind of probability distribution. Okay. Okay, so it means that the entanglement entropy is calculated by the Schmidt, Schmidt coefficient. And from this calculation, we can also know that in this case, we use a low weight. But we perform the similar calculation for the row B, and we calculate the entanglement entropy by using the row B. And the, because the entanglement entropy is, uh, depends only on the Schmidt coefficient, so not depend on the previous e, U and B, that is the unitary matrices, it means that if we calculate the entanglement entropy by using the row B instead of the row A, we obtain the same. So, okay. So it means that the, uh, yeah. okay, anyway, we, there is no di difference between the row and row. We consider only the uh, entropy. Oh, sorry, entropy. Oh, <coughs> or a quantum entanglement between the A and B. Okay, then let me explain the condition of this entanglement entropy. So, in the case of the uh, Schmidt one is equal to one, in this case, the uh, only one Schmidt weight is equal to one and the other is zero. And in this case, we obtain the entanglement entropy is equal to zero. And if the weight over the end state is 10, and due to the normalization, we obtain that this one was zero to 10. And in this case, we obtain the S equal Okay. And in the dimension of the, this mixed density matrix, sorry, this density matrix. So actually, the, we can prove that, that this log n is the maximum value of the entanglement entropy, and zero is the minimum value of the entanglement entropy. And another situation is that the case that the, this Schmidt weight decay exponentially like this. 
In this case, we consider if we consider some limiting case so that the alpha is much smaller than one, and by taking the limit of this one, so we consider the many degree of freedom. So like <coughs> this distribution becomes a continuous. Then in this case, the Schmidt uh, sorry, entanglement entropy becomes one minus log zero alpha. So it means that smaller exponent alpha it has the larger entropy. So in the limit of the flat spectrum, we obtain the maximum entropy. So the entanglement entropy characterizes the decay speed of the Schmidt coefficient, or in the same way, the decay speed of the singular value of the mother set. Okay. Then, so it means that, uh, as I explained before, the number of non zero uh, Schmidt coefficients correspond to the uh, rank of the matrix. And the, in the language of the data compression, uh, we can neglect the zero uh, singular values, uh, sorry, eigenvectors or singular vectors corresponding to the zero Schmidt decomposition uh, and zero singular values. So we can perform the uh, efficient data compression in the case of the lower number. Similarly, if the this spectrum decays very fast, we can neglect the deep contribution. It means that we can perform the lower number, low number approximation of the matrix M efficient. So it means that if the entanglement entropy is small, we can efficiently approximate our total space by neglecting the smaller shibia or smaller speed coefficient. So we don't use the smaller lambdas to represent the, our quantum state in in this in this Schmidt decomposition form. That is the basic idea in the data compression using the disk uh I'll say quantum example. So sorry, I have a question. Okay. Um, so um, I cannot imagine the situation we can get the flat lambda i value and the exponential decay case. So uh -huh. Uh -huh. so the typical example is n equal to, and uh, if we consider singlet in the case of the zero one half spin, that gives us a flat spectrum. So because Singlet is the superposition up and down and down, uh, up and down and down up and the great extent. So the, by comparing the singlet expression with this decomposition, you realize that the lambda i corresponds to the one over square root of two, and that corresponds to this flat spectrum in the case of the n. And similarly, if we have the n degree, we, know, we can design the such kind of uh, in some sense, symmetric state, yeah. and uh, that gives us the flux of spectrum. And actually, it is called the maximally entangled state because it gives us the maximum entanglement. So that state gives us the how to say largest entanglement, total entanglement. Ah, the flux spectrum can give the largest entanglement. Yes. yes. And the uh, exponential decay is a typical situation. So it means that, uh, not typical, but so most of the state shows that uh, this exponential decay asymptotically. So can you give the concrete example for the exponential decay case? Uh, yeah, if, if we target the ground state of the, some gap system, and gap, gap the quantum system, uh, probably in the tutorial, we calculate the distance the system for the autopilot system, and you can see that uh, it looks like the exponent. Thanks very much. Uh, <laughs> contact the key gap system where the correlation is very small. Okay, yes. You should be, you're supposed to get the exponential decay of the. Yes, but yeah. Yeah. Right. the flag one, I an infrustrated system error state. If you have a short correlation, you have to have exponential decay. I mean, the we, yes, yes. This, this is, physical system will have a complete flag. Either it will be power law or exponential. Flag will be very difficult to get. Yes. 
that is related to the area of the entanglement. Okay. Actually, the flat spectrum corresponds to the maximum entanglement uh, contact correlation. But what I want to say is that if we consider the low energy state of the total energy of the system with shoulder energy interaction, that quantum entanglement is very small compared with the flat spectrum. That is called the area of the entanglement. So it means that uh, in order to obtain a true flat system in the, our physical system, we need to manipulate the, our constant state. So that kind of the state cannot be realized in, as the ground state of the sound. And uh, what I want to say in this slide is that, the, yeah, again, the, I'd like to emphasize the property of Property so called the area of the entanglement entropy. So, the previous entanglement entropy is easy to show that if we pick up the random vector in our huge Hilbert space and calculate the entanglement entropy for such random vector, and if we change the uh, say system size or volume or the size of the Hilbert space, then we can show that the entanglement entropy is proportional to the volume of this event, for example, in the case of the random vector. So that, that is the typical property of the vector in our vector space. However, if we consider the physical state, for example, the ground state of for a given Capitonian, it is uh, known or believed that the entanglement entropy is proportional to the area instead of the volume. That is called the area of the entanglement entropy. Especially in the case of the one dimensional system, the area is constant, independent of the system size. And so, and in this case, the, there is a rigorous proof that the gap of the ground state for the local component is. Uh, Satisfied by this area of the entanglement. So it means that the scaling of the entanglement entropy is much different from the typical behavior in the ground of it, picking up from the outer vector space. And so if we are interested in only the physical state instead of the general state in our vector, our vector space, we can use this uh, information to perform the data compression. That is the idea of the tensor network recognition. So we use this kind of domain knowledge in some sense to perform the data compression in a context. Uh, this is the table for the term, uh, expected entanglement scaling for spin system taken from the this review paper. So in the case of the one remainder of system, it is known the rigorous proof. But in the case of the higher dimensional system, there are some case studies. Also, for example, if uh, so, uh, in the case of the gap, the system it is the uh, area rows, and for the if we consider the quantum critical point in the some uh, special universal algebra. Then it is also over the area. And it is the crucial difference between the one dimensional system and two dimensional system. In the case of the one dimensional system, the entanglement entropy is proportional to the low end in the case of the principal situation. However, in the case of the two dimensional system, even if we consider the gapless situation, the area uh, low can be uh, satisfied without any logarithmic limit. Multiplicative logarithmic correction. In the case of the for example, the spontaneous symmetry breaking, and the, we have the additive long wave correction, but the leading contribution is again the area. Okay, so it means that in the case of the higher dimensional system, we can use the, we can basically assume the area of the entanglement. Even in the case of the critical system. Okay, so this is uh, some uh, uh, 
リケーション、ニューメーカーのカリケーション、チャンスタライズ、スケーリングとエンタングルメント、エントロピー、レフトスライド、ショーザ、サン、エンタングルメント、エントロピー、アザ、ファンクション、ザ、システムサイズ、エンド、ソーザ、ヒアウィー、プッ、ザ、ディメンジャーオブ、アウア、ベクター、スペース、アス、ツー、デザ、エンド、ソー、ライクザ、コンカメント、リシステム、デン、アス、イ、インクリーズ、ザ、エンド、ザ、エンタングルメント、エントロピー、Increase like this. And so it means that entanglement entropy is proportional to the n, and in this case, n is the volume of, of the our system. So because this shows the volume of the entanglement entropy if we consider a random vector in this vector. However, for example, if we consider the ground state of the, this transfer speed ideal model, and here we consider the up state, then the Entanglement entropy may tend to saturate for the larger end. And if we compare the value itself, the, in the case of the random vector for the n equals 20, the entanglement entropy itself is the six, but in the right hand side, the value is uh, one or, uh, about 4.7. It is more or one order. So, By comparing this to situation, we can realize that the our quantum medical state, the physical state, has a low, very low, small quantum entanglement. So we have a question from the online audience. Okay. Uh, please unmute my. Okay. Yeah. So so when we calculate this entanglement entropy, you have uh, taken. Sorry, we can must figure out. Just a second for the government. Please ask me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, uh, can you uh, calculate yeah. this entanglement entropy and plotted in this figure? So, you have taken uh, equi bipartisan or any bipartisan. So, uh, what, yeah. what I think like uh, the uh, rule of that uh, area law or volume law is like uh, uh, how much like for 1D system like uh, how you uh, partition the system like in, independent of that that entangle entropy will remain the same. So here this N is the total system size or that uh, partition system size? Yes. So, sorry, I, I didn't catch uh, so so that. Is the N is the N. So, N is a full system, but here we consider the equipartition of the our system. So, we divide the system into N over 2 and N over 2. That's the question. Uh, that's all. So, we consider the equipartition of the our system into two parts. And so, in this sense, uh, we should consider the plot uh, N over 2 instead of N, but uh, it is all on the same. Okay. Like the uh, same rule can be verified by fixing the system size and dividing the uh, bipartisan length. Ah, okay. We can also consider such kind of situation and we can see that a similar scaling in the case of the system size of the physical system. But uh, I guess once we fix the system size, we have the, some boundary effect on the larger, larger end. So probably it is better to increase the system uh, total whole system uh, together with considering the by uh, partition. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So anyway, in this case we consider equal partition of our system. As I uh, said, uh, go back to the previous slide. Uh, this one. So here you were mentioning that the random vector, uh, in the case of the random vector, the volume law is, um, and uh, in the in the case of the ground state, it is the area law. Why you were saying this? Uh, uh, this state is volume law. And in this case, we want the one dimensional chain, and the I, I, I'd like to say that this is almost highly independent in the asymptotically, and so it means an area of the one dimension. 
So if you of down the sum and dependence here, but this is this can be caused under the final side space. And okay. so uh, the point is that for larger n, so we may observe the saturation of entanglement entropy by extrapolating this behavior, and we see that some, somehow the saturating behavior of the entanglement entropy is but unfortunately here I use the exact diagonalization of the system size is limited. Okay, so you are saying that uh, yeah, it is actually going to the some constant value for the entangled entropy in yeah, the case yeah. for the transverse field yeah, yeah. So that's why it is follows the area law. Yeah, right. Okay. And, uh, um, okay, so can you please go back to the two slides before? Two slides. Uh, yes. Uh, here you can say that the entangled entropy is proportional to its volume. And um, yeah. after that, for a lot of ground states, the entanglement is proportional to this area. Yeah. So is this the same reason uh, you were saying that? Same reason. But anyway, the point is that uh, the area of that main the entanglement the entropy is proportional to the area. So the if we consider some, some system, and in this special example, we consider one dimensional chain. And so if we divide the system into two parts, the area is the how to say order one. It does not depend on the system size. And it means that the this entanglement of the end of it becomes constant, independent of the system size. And it, it means the same as the system. Okay. Okay, so thank you. Yes. Sorry, we almost have one now. I okay. think we for the question time. Yes. Um, okay, okay, so I stopped here and the past two I stopped from this. Okay, thank you very much. Well, we'll see you from the three minutes for the question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I still have a question about the uh, um, volume model for the standard stream. Right. Okay. Uh, the state can represent the high temperature of uh, the yes. state. So that's what one to the non state. But why we can see the volume of all? Uh, it's a good question. So the, it depends on the some kind of the equality. So the, yeah, probably some of the So the, usually the high temperature state is defined as the fixed state instead of the pure state. But we know that uh, we can represent the typical behavior of the final temperature state by the by the single pure state. The random state corresponds to the just state uh, such kind of the permanent pure state at the high temperature. And in that situation, the entanglement entropy just represents the usual permanent instead of the there are many ways of uh, consulting the parametric state of finite temperature. And uh, as you know, it shows the pure state to represent the quantum vector. Okay. And, and, and as you know, the thermal entropy is proportional to the volume, and uh, this volume will be taken the thermal so, is that like you are saying that if you have a complete random configuration, you have much more like entropy in the system? I mean, that's yes, 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 yes. But then, you see that, I mean, this maximally entangled method, what they use for uh, the emerging, they in fact take only two or three states, two states, and high temperature they can just do without much of difficulty. I mean, only few states, maybe 10 states if you take. You can construct all the problems. Yes. yes. So I think putting too much thinking too much about the entropy in these de emerging methods. I mean, after saying this, I'm quick careful. Uh -huh. So in so probably you can have a Yeah. Yeah. So, so if you yeah. see that the way yeah. they, they start, they just 
take up down the linear combination. Yeah, and just only two states. That gives them uh, like so, oh, like a paramagnetic state very really clearly. Okay, but uh, I, I think in the bed we introduce the coupling and we generate the I'll say somehow random configuration. Not only uh, random terms, you have to uh, make yeah, sure yeah. that it cancels out. Yeah, but but we introduce the sample. Uh, I'll say mark of state sampling in the case of comet. So such sampling procedure corresponds to generate the the whole thing. But yeah, if I see that Steve White's paper, if you see the first paper where we started with, you see that initial starting point is just linear combination of the yeah, right, right, right. and it gives Parametric state very clearly. Yes, very good. That, that's <laughs> great. The house state somehow the difficulty of the point of state. Oh, so, yeah, I am. They did come because so, I thought that it's much more related with the like how much correlation you have in the system. Mm -hmm. and that's where both should be very able. If you have yes. very short range correlation, I guess you should think of. I mean, yes. So. Mm, yeah. Yeah. I mean, this I was not aware of. But this. yeah. But yeah. So this is so, so here we represent the uh, high temperature state by using the pure state, but we can also represent the uh, high temperature state by the mixed state. So using the density matrix, and if we perform the Hessian on the operation of the density matrix corresponding to the high temperature bit, we can say that the, that is a kind of the product state. So there is somehow the difference between the pure state and mixed state. And uh, in the case of the bed, they try to calculate the state by using the mixture of several bases, not only one pure state. So that corresponds to the, some, something different between the pure state and the state. No, but if you put in the temperature dependent or like high temperature, this thing, then I don't know. Then you should consider those that's a, that contribution is coming from the thermal fluctuation other the quantum fluctuation. Yeah. We are, I mean, in quantum system, we are more interested in the uh, uh, like a from the on quantum fluctuations yeah, right. rather those, yes. Uh, yes, those other things. Yes, yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so it's time to the problem. Yeah, so uh, what you're showing the transfer transfer in that case. So that is in the order state, right? Order yes, phase. Yes, all so the order phase. if you go for further gamma, so it eventually becomes into paramagnetic uh, yeah, in the disordered state. Mm -hmm. So when uh, you are in that state, in that phase, uh, so your this thing is going uh entanglement entropy is going to be Following the material law, or it is yes. going to be yes. like the random. Yes. Uh, in, in the house there, larger gamma state, yes. we also have the area law, but at, at the critical point, uh, so the in bit, how say, the separation point of the low gamma state and the high gamma state, then the, it follows the this scale. So we have the Robert, Robert or Robert in the previous representation, Robert scale at the special critical point. But in other state, so the whole general gamma, we have the area. So the eventually, so the collection, final side collection depends on the value of the gamma. So the heat gamma becomes close, closer to the critical point. The final side uh, behavior becomes large. So the saturation length becomes longer, but the inventory is more to the constant. But in the case of the crystal point, there is a low balance in collection. So it goes to the low value. So it's going to increase even the limit of the value. So it is going to be saturating even in that this right? Uh, or in the older phase, or an uh, item. But at, at the critical point, it's uh, it looks up Okay, so now is the time to grow. So the thanks to the.
that long. Yeah. So, thank you, Professor Purus. And then we need to be coming back at two o'clock.